stoichiometry in redox reactions and titrimity in redox reactions. The basics of the balancing and all that kind of stuff has already been done, and now what we're going to be doing is um, applying it and using stoichiometry. So when you're doing stoichiometry with redox reactions, it is pretty much the same in terms of the ratio and stuff like that. What you do need to be mindful of is the spectator ions. So I always find it easier to balance the reactions without the spectators, so remove them. And then when you're doing the stoichiometry, you just want to be mindful of the spectators because the molar masses that you use will need the spectators. So in this reaction here, we've got sodium sulfite and potassium dichromite in acidic solution. So the spectators are sodium and potassium. You've got sulfite, and sulfite converts to SO4 2 minus. And the dichromate, as we've seen a couple of times, converts to chromium ions. So you need to balance this in acid. So I'd encourage you to pause the video and balance so that you can practice that skill. One big thing about this one that you haven't seen in any examples yet so far is that the very first step of balancing the other atoms needs to be done. So chromium here, you need a two there. Okay, it's not going to work unless you um, are mindful of that. Okay, so when this is balanced in acid, the final reaction that you have is this here. Okay, once you've balanced it, you want to double check and make sure that the charge and the atoms are balanced, okay, which I've done and made sure. Okay, and now we can do the stoichiometry. So the question is how many grams of sodium sulfate are needed to react with 12.4 grams of the potassium dichromate. So you're starting with 12.4 grams of potassium dichromate. Okay, so you need to be careful when you're finding the molar mass to include the spectator, but also be mindful of the charges of potassium and the dichromate. So it's K2Cr2O7. So the number of moles here is 12.4 divided by 294.2. Okay, so the moles of the potassium dichromate is 0.042. Okay, then we need to apply the ratio, much like we would in regular stoichiometry problems. So there's three times the amount of sulfate is required. So the number of moles of the sulfite is three times that. Okay, which is 0.1264. Okay, and for every one mole of SO3, 2 minus, we get one mole of sodium sulfite because the ratio is 1 to 1 in terms of the spectator or the sulfite ion. Okay, so that is also the moles of the Na2SO3. Okay, and that's something that you're constantly going to need to be mindful of in stoichiometry in redox problems. Okay, so then when I'm finding the final mass, I'm going to use the molar mass of the sodium sulfite, which is 126.05, and that gives me a total of 15.9 grams. Now you've seen redox titration, so in a redox titration we're using the titrant is something that changes color. So in our case the permanganate that we used changed color from purple to colorless as it was reacting with the hydrogen peroxide. And so once the hydrogen peroxide was all consumed then a pale permanent pink was produced. 
Okay, so in redox titrations, the titrant can actually act as an indicator as well. Okay. So we're doing an example here where we've got a sample of iron ore, a two gram sample of iron ore, and we're dissolving it in acid. And so all of the iron in that sample is being converted into Fe2+. So now we've got this solution where we've got Fe2+. And we're going to titrate that solution of Fe2+, with permanganate. Okay, and it's in an acidified solution. So in acidified solution, the permanganate converts to Mn2+, and in this case, the iron, it tells us, will be oxidized to Fe3+. So using the information from the question, we've got our skeleton equation here, which can then be balanced using the half reaction method in acid. So this is the balanced equation. And so what we're given here is that we're starting with the two gram sample, and we're given that we titrate that sample with the 0.1 molar permanganate, and the volume of the permanganate that's required is 27.45 milliliters. So the moles of permanganate that's reacted with the iron is 0 0.002745. So that's step one is to find the moles. Okay, step two, we use the ratio. So the moles of Fe2 plus that we have is actually uh, five times that. Okay, so 0.013725. And then we can find the mass of the iron from that, okay? For every one mole of Fe2+, that came from one mole of Fe. So there's one-to-one -one ratio. So the moles of iron in the original sample are the same as the moles of the iron 2 plus in the original sample. So that would give us a mass of iron of 0.7. 665. Okay, so as a percentage, we had a 2 gram sample, and that's the mass of the pure iron in that sample. And so as a percentage, it's 38.3%, which was found by taking the 0.7665 and dividing by 2 times 100. And that gives us the percentage. Now in C, it's saying, what if the iron was actually in the sample as Fe2O3? Okay. And if it was in the sample as Fe2O3, the ratio between the iron and the Fe, the iron oxide and the Fe2 plus would not actually be one to one, okay? because for every one mole of the iron oxide, we actually have two moles of the Fe2+. So what that means is when we are working backwards, we've got, in step two up here, we know the moles of the Fe2+, that we had, but the equivalent moles of iron oxide is actually half that amount. So the moles of iron oxide here is 0 0.0068. To five, and so if we find the mass, then it's one point oh nine five nine, and the percent in the two gram sample is fifty four point eight percent. Okay, so the percent of pure iron in that sample is thirty eight point three. The percent of Fe two O three is fifty eight point four. So that's how you do that distinction.
So this concludes our lesson in the basics of redox reactions and the stoichiometry and balancing of the reactions.